Hello there, my friends. Today, we're going to be talking about three great biographies that are excellent for high achievers like you, trying to build wealth and success and achieve all your beautiful dreams, you know, and build those beautiful rainbows. Yes, this is for you. All right, so we're going to be talking about Leonardo da Vinci, Steve Jobs, Plutarch's Roman lives. First of all, these are excellent books, two of that are written by Walter Isaacson. If you're new, welcome to the channel and we start with Leonardo da Vinci. This is an amazing biography of this great Italian Renaissance man who we know painted the Mona Lisa, yes, and some other things, but the guy was total polymath. He could write, he could draw, he could, you know, dissect bodies, he could paint the most beautiful landscape and take 10 years to do it. He was a great engineer he could basically do anything he set his sights on what are the main takeaways that I get from this Leonardo was the most curious man you will ever find in this book we can see how Walter describes Leonardo just wondering about every single thing that happened around him in his environment in his world he could look up at the sky and say okay why is this blue and why do the clouds move like they do what is it and then he would theorize with every other thing he knew about the movement of things, about physics of things, of why they work the way they did. And not being simply dogmatic about it, he went on and invented his new theories, which was something uncommon, I believe, or it was just being developed by the Renaissance mindset, you know, discarding everything that was fixed and settled by the church and just trying to come up with new ideas and the notion of seeing that we don't know anything at all. There's always something new to discover around us and that searching different fields different knowledges fields of knowledges can help us mix up and become better at those things for example Leonardo does a great job with the Mona Lisa wine that supposedly this painting can move around with you and the optics of it are simply astonishing and beautiful why because Leonardo spent about 20 years or 30 years of his life dissecting bodies and studying off physics of how things worked and how light bounced of different surfaces and how our eyes perceived the light and how it was received also in the retina and, and the anatomy of the eye that later on drove him to seek this kind of perfection in his painting which we can see basically in the Mona Lisa this distilled wisdom throughout the years of layers and layers of new knowledge which culminated in this great masterpiece so out of that we can get some dedication to persevere to to follow what truly drives us and, and, and makes us curious, you know? Perceive that which is yours truly, not what others say that you should be doing, but what you truly are curious of. And maybe, who knows, you'll make them up, mix all these hobbies or things that you love into something new. After this, we've got Steve Jobs, also by Walter Isaacson. From this great man, I believe we all know him nowadays. He is the creator, founder of Apple, along with uh, the other Steve, Steve Wozniak. And they together have built or set the foundations of what was to become one of the greatest and most innovative companies of all time. How did he do that? Well, I believe we can get some principles out of his life. Just like Leonardo, he had an endless curiosity for the things that he loved and one of those was beauty. And what he set himself for beauty was not the standard thing that we might say, okay, this looks good, but he was unrelenting and, and ceaseless in that pursuit of making things perfect. How can we see that? There's this little story about first Macintosh or Apple, which was built. And the team of engineers basically built it like, you know, many manufacturers built computers at that time. He opened up the case and saw that the circuits and transistors were not aligned beautifully, as he would call it. And then asked the engineers to organize those things into a beautiful system. Why? Maybe that comes from his childhood. When, when Steve was little, his father was building, I believe, furniture. And he had built this cabinet, beautifully manufactured, built, polished. And Steve went around and saw that the back of it, the inside, side of the back was astonishingly and his father just kept working on it and he asked him why are you doing all this nobody's ever gonna see that and his father answered well yes you are gonna see it you're gonna know it's there and he kept that with him for the rest of his life you know just making things great and as best as we can because we know that we have seen it we know how much work we have put in that kind of persistence and commitment of course not bordering on the edge of this perfectionism that can cripple us and keep 
us paralyzed where you just like never release your work because it's never gonna be perfect he learned that on in Pixar and then or at Apple he learned that at Apple and just released a product and try to iterate on the way but he had this great great desire for excellence from Steve we also get persistence trying to improve everything that we can along the way and make the best of it he tried with Apple many times he succeeded he was then he was then kicked out of his own company why because people had their ideals principles he wanted to take the company in another direction he was kicked out he started another company called um Nexus, I believe, something like that. No, I'm next, next. He started next, and then he drove up the company, built it, and then got bought out by Apple again. Imagine that. He came back after like 10 years. He started Pixar. He just kept working on the things that he truly believed in, even when nobody else did. Isn't that amazing? Just like working for what you truly want and love and would see materialized in this world. I think it's something extremely worthy of, of our time. And that is what Leo, I mean, Steve, also Leo, was doing. Doing. And Walter has just the most beautiful prose, entertaining, dedicated. He's done his research. He worked along with Steve Jobs on that book. We get best of his life. And also, he's not he's not delicate with that. He also shows some of the true character of Steve. Things, as we know, we are human beings. We're flawed. There are going to be things that we're going to be proud of. Others that we're not so going to be proud of. But still, great learn. And third of all, we've got Plutarch's Roman life. Perhaps one of the oldest biographers that we have conception of. Uh, this great Roman writes about what is it? I think eight or nine popular Roman lives, including Julius Caesar, uh, Pompey, uh, Emilius Paulus, the Gracchi, and um, some other emperors. And we can get out from this is learning from history that the struggles that we have nowadays or the cravings that we have, fame, power, desire, they are ancient. They have been around centuries for thousands of years and we are prone to them. We might think, oh no, I will never do that. I will never be revealed by money or power and try to uh, dominate or become a tyrant. Who knows? We are prone to that. We've all got that shadow inside of us. And maybe we can learn from these guys, from that embracing that dark side, staring into the abyss and knowing that if we acknowledge these things, we can become better. And also to learn from their resilience, from their persistence, from their unendless pursuit of doing what they believed was right, which is truly inspiring for me. I mean, in the end, many of them succumb to greed or power I think that inclination can be extremely alluring and you might do it, I might do it, but still like working for those things that we truly want in life and searching every way to do it within our ethical boundaries. I believe that's amazing and we can learn from these guys and see that these ancient generals, ancient emperors are truly inspiring that they face war, uh, hunger, trail, death at every corner, you know, a very short lifespan and they still endure and they try to do their best and yes they suffered they went into risk and then they just screamed yalla yata est and crossed the freaking river of uncertainty into what could come i believe that's that's nice and inspiring so if you want a wisdom of some of the world's i believe greatest characters read these books you're gonna get a lot out of them i believe you can get new things but i believe these things are useful to you let me know great of usefulness of these biographies i would give them a nine out of ten i believe it's extremely interesting interesting to see how character develop around incident and around a long or short lifespan but throughout a man's life that is extremely alluring to me interesting i hope you enjoy it if you like this video don't forget to subscribe i'm going to be talking a lot about things that i learn and that i like and i would love to invite you over to keep learning with me have a great day Bye.